Enough smartphone talk for crying out loud. Uh, we join one of the most recognizable men in the barbecue industry right now, friend of the show, pit master of Jack's Old South Barbecue, Myron Mixon, joining us. How are you, Myron? Doing good, big man. How are you doing? Uh, doing absolutely fantastic, Myron. Always appreciate you making time for the show. I know it's a busy time for you. So let's go ahead and jump right into it while we have you. Uh, we took place American Royal this past weekend, a contest that you're very familiar with. Uh, you did both the invite and the open. Invite uh, not as successful for the open this time. I mean, it's, this is a big competition. We look at the invitation first. You're cooking up against really some of the top teams that are invited to cook out there. Uh, I don't know. I guess we could make arguments as far as what contest has the ability to collect all of the best of the best, and you can kind of get at each other in one venue. American Royal certainly comes to mind on in the invitational side of things. How do you view that? Well, I mean, you know, the Invitational this year had 140 teams in it, and that's the most I've ever seen in the Invitational side. I mean, and everybody in that contest has won a championship to be there. Then you look at the Open, they had about 500 teams in the Open this year. I mean, that is a lot of cookers stuck in one spot. And, you know, that's a lot of judges have to have there to eat a lot of food. And by far, it's the biggest contest there is around. So when you're cooking the invite, Myron, and you know that you're cooking up against people that, uh, you know, obviously, as you said, you had to win it to get in it. You've been doing this a long time now, so perhaps this is a trite question for me to ask, but, you know, a lot of people aren't as uh, familiar with competition barbecue uh, just for me talking with a bunch of you guys here over the last four or five years. You know, when you're looking at the invitational side versus the open, are you prepping any differently for the invite than you would when you're cooking against 500 other teams? I mean, to me, the invitation is the most important part of the American Royal contest to start with because you are cooking against your peers, people who have won. And that's the one that I really want to do well in. You know, I'm not saying I don't want to do well in the open side, but the one that I prepare for and the one I look forward to doing is the invitation because everyone there, like we've always said, it's one thing, one contest, and you got to be on your A game. And you got to hope to get on the right tables, and you hope to have the good judges. And, you know, that's what you always want to do. Now, when you're getting your product ready, Myron, and you are, you know, you're competing, if you start to see some categories start to slip off here and there, at what point do you start to, and I'm assuming you're tracking how you're doing through each and every contest, at what point would you decide to start making some type of tweak or some type of an adjustment to try and get the scores back on track? Well, that's what I do all the time anyway because we do the cooking schools and I've always, you know, i got so many people coming through the schools and they're going on and doing better. I have to stay ahead of the curve to be able to have something maybe new and fresh to kind of go against that. But when you start slipping, you start seeing yourself fall out of the top ten and it starts doing it maybe three to five contests in a row, whatever category that is, you need to start tweaking. You need to start getting yourself back in front of that curve again. And most of the time, for me, it's always ribs and chicken that's the hardest to stay in front of. You know, brisket and pork, pretty well the same thing for me in the last four to five years. But chicken and ribs is something that changes all the time. You know, the flavor profiles, I believe everybody out there now that's contended to win a championship can get chicken or can get ribs, the done and tenderness that every judge is looking for, then it gets to be a sauce contest or a flavor contest. And that's what you got to stay ahead of. How are, you, how are you able to make those adjustments to stay, let's say, ahead of the curve so you're not falling behind or, or just doing what everybody else? How, how are you able to not be a me-too as some of the other teams out there on the competition are? Well, I mean, I'm around a lot of judges, and I don't – every time I get around them, I don't do a lot of talking. I do a lot of listening, you know, about what they've had there today. And I look at the contest that we're actually competing in that day, I look at the field. You got – Johnny Trick there, and you got the Mike Davis there, and you got, you know, the QIs there. Then you start listening to what the feedback is from some of the judges that I highly respect. You know, was things too sweet, things too maple flavored, depending on the category we're talking about, let's just say ribs, uh, you know, too buttery, you know, that kind of thing. You want to pay attention to that. Myron Mixon joining us here on the show. JacksOldSouth.com is the website. And, of course, we're going to be uh, talking about that book, Smoking with Myron Mixon, as well here in a minute. 
So we look at your results. Uh, the invite, you finished 46, so uh, definitely not a, a terrible showing, probably not something uh, that you were hoping for, uh, knowing you uh, just a little bit in, in the conversations that we've had in the past, Myron. How did you feel the cook one well, during the open, or during the well, invite? You know, the invitational side was kind of a letdown for me. Uh, the team and I were out there. I had to leave Saturday morning to fly back to Atlanta to do a book signing. And then I flew back Saturday night to be there for the open, so I wasn't actually there for the invitation. But it wouldn't you know, it wouldn't matter if they did the same game plan that it would have happened if I'd have been there. And you know, they executed all on the marks that we've been hitting with all year, and it just didn't happen. You know, we just didn't have the flavor profile they were looking for. You know, but we came back in the open side, and you know, we were 26 out of 500 plus teams. That ain't bad. You know, that ain't bad at all. And there's a lot of good teams down below 26. I can tell you that. Now, are you able to look at the open side of things and seeing you know you're I mean, you, you finish you know 400 uh, teams better than were there at the open? D- do you think that you were able to adjust flavor profiles that much better to give you a 26 overall finish, or because of the sheer amount of teams that are there? and the judges that they have to meet in order to, to get everything tasted, is there a little bit more luck involved in that? Well, I think it's some of both. I know we did make some changes for the Open from the day before. Um, you know, on the East Coast, where we do most of our cooking, or East Mississippi, you know, it's not as hickory flavored and it's not as smoky flavored as you get when you start cooking west of the Mississippi. You know, in Kansas City being the mecca of all that, we started, we changed our flavor profiles a little bit. The tenderness and tenderness we didn't bother with. But we did a little, few little tweaks with the sauces that we used on our chicken, a few little tweaks with the sauces that we used on our ribs. And uh, we basically smoked it up a little bit. And I believe that helped more than anything. The luck factor comes into play, too. Uh, you know, I've always said I just think be lucky to be good. <laughs> Myron Mixon joining us here on the show. All right, so American Royal behind us, obviously. Next couple of weeks, we're building into the Jack Daniels. And uh, this is a contest that you've gone to. Geez, I mean, it's been 13, 14 times. I think you went 12 times in a row, uh, something that a couple of years Fine. ago you were on a good stretch there. Uh, you've been close. You've been reserve grand champion. Uh, you've probably been third place a couple of times on the deal. But no wins. So how are you feeling this year? Is this the time that Jack's Old South puts it together and walks away with grand championship? Well, so far right now, we've hit five grands for the year and about four reserve grands, and we're coming off of uh, taking the Royal out of play. We've won the last four out of five contests previous, and, you know, I feel very confident in it because we are back east of Mississippi. Uh, most of the judges that will be judging the Jack, a lot of them will be from around in our area there. When I say area, it's the east of uh, Seaport. And, you know, I feel good about it. Uh, I've been there close. I've taken some reserves there. I take the third places there. I won three first place whole hogs there before that was eliminated. So you know, I've got a good rapport with being in Lynchburg, and I look forward to it this year. I mean, that is one. You know, I'm not going to tell you I don't want to win the Royal, <laughs> but I believe anybody out there competes predominantly KCBS. If God said you can have one or two, you can have Jack Daniels, you can have the Royal. I believe 99% of them would tell you they want the Jack Daniels. Why do you think that is, Myron? It's more prestigious, and you are cooking against champions, and it's so hard to get in it. You know, you got a smaller field. you got, what, 60, 65 teams in it. But everybody there, you know, has won multiples to get in there. And it's the best of the best. Just like the invitation side of the Royal is. And but it's where your location is. At. You're in the mountains of uh, Tennessee. You're right there where Jack Daniels makes his whiskey, and um, it's got a mystique to it. You know, it's just uh, it's it's one of those crowns that you want to get. Myron Mixon joining us here on the show. Myron, when you were making that 12 year stretch. You know, you get down there the first year, the second year, the fourth year, you're probably very confident that at some point you're going to hit, you're going to take away that grand championship. But the year started to string together, you were close, but you never brought it away. Did it, did the mindset ever change for you where you were like, you know, this is the year from, damn, is this ever going to happen for Jack's Old South down here? Yeah, I mean, I, the year we won reserve grand, 
you know, I'd already had the feeling before we got there. We were just, you know, I enjoy going there every year. Um, not that I wasn't going to be competitive and try my best, but I just figured this is going to be one of these contests I'll never win. You know, and there's very few of them I haven't ever won, but right. uh, it was getting out of reach, I felt like, for me. And I felt, you know, I just keep winning and getting my draws, and I'll go and, you know, be in the top of the field, but I didn't never feel like that it was going to happen for me. I didn't get to that point, you know, and I was already positioning myself where I could accept that. And then we hit the preserve grand, and it kind of gave me a new enthusiasm for it. So, you know, I'm going to be back this year with the pension. All right, so let's go ahead and pontificate just for a moment. When you decide to take the fire out of the pit altogether, you call it a barbecue career. If if you don't end up winning the Jack Daniels at some point during the competition career, does it end up being a disappointment? Is it something you're going to look back on and always wish you would have won, or can you look past that given what you've won? Yeah, I mean, I can look past it, but you always want to win the ones you never got. I mean, there's no doubt about that. That's always the... You know, that, that, that's the contest everybody wants to win. But, you know, my career, uh, winning what I've won and, and some of the most prestigious contests in the country, um, you know, I'm satisfied with it. All right, now I've asked everybody that's going down to the Jack Daniels this year that I've had on the show the past couple of weeks, uh, and since you're going down, I'm not going to not ask you, percentage of chance that you will actually win Jack Daniels this year? Percentage chance? Yes. I think it's better than seventy five percent. Seventy five percent. All right. Mark Myron Mixon down for seventy five percent. That's the second highest total. Everybody else has been right around ten percent. They don't want to, you know, lay out, put their heads out there on a stick, except for uh Motley Q crew said they were at a hundred percent chance of winning the Jack Daniels, but uh, evidently their motto is go big or go home. So they just come off a damn roll up there at the American <laughs> Royal, I can tell you that. Yeah, no doubt. So seventy five percent for uh Myron Mixon, so we'll put that in the hopper and see where that rolls out. Um, you know, Myron, you've you've had uh, obviously another great year, but you're also still rolling on the success of you know the TV shows and the appearances on uh, Craig Ferguson. You've also been on Conan O'Brien. How is it balancing the barbecue business with competitions? Is it tougher right now? Yes, it is. Uh, I told somebody today. Matter of fact, I'm driving back from Illinois right now. Um, when I went out to the Royal last week, a gentleman went on my website and saw that I was at the Royal and contacted me through my website about doing a catering for him, and I stopped back by and did the catering, and I'm on my way driving back toward Georgia. But be careful what you wish for. You know, I tell you that I still love it, but there's a lot more going on now than me just competing. You know, with the cookbook and with uh, working on YouTube shows and trying to do other things, Again, I still love to do it, but uh, sometimes it's not enough of Myron to go around. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, when you're at a competition now, you're very visible. Uh, you were one of the more uh, revered characters on the Pitmaster series. People got to want a piece of you when you're out there trying to prep chicken, you're trying to prep brisket, and doing all the stuff that you would normally do prior to you know all this success. How hard is it dealing with those fans? You don't want to turn people away. You want to make sure that uh, everybody is able to get a piece of iron, but there's really only so much for you to go around. Yeah, well, the thing about it is, I appreciate them so much for watching the shows, and they, you know, I appreciate them thinking I'm a character. I appreciate them buying stuff from me on my uh, e store, my website, you know, buying the books and stuff like that. And if they can take time enough to do all these things, I can take time enough to walk out of there to the edge of my tent and take a picture or shake a hand or talk to them. You know, I'm not going to turn my back on them. Uh, I'm not foolish enough to know this is going to last forever. You know, you can take it 15 minutes. I think mine's last a little longer than 15 minutes of fame. But uh, these people, they think for whatever short period of time that uh, I'm to cast me out, well, I'm going to walk right out there. I'm going to hug him, shake their hand, and tell him thank you. Myron Mixon joining us here on the show. The website he was talking about, by the way, jacksoldsouth.com, if you want to 